सब रेस में लग गए ऐसे पढ़ के फर्स्ट आ भी गए तो क्या फायदा आप लोगों की नॉलेज बढ़ेगी नहीं सिर्फ प्रेशर बढ़ेगा अरे चाबुक के डर से तो सर्कस का शेर भी उछल के कुर्सी पर बैठना सीख जाता है लेकिन ऐसे शेर को हम वेल well ट्रेन्ड कहते हैं वेल well एजुकेटेड नहीं 1968 में आई थी इंडिया की पहली एजुकेशन पॉलिसी इंदिरा गांधी गवर्नमेंट ने और 1986 में आई थी इंडिया की दूसरी एजुकेशन पॉलिसी राजीव गांधी गवर्नमेंट ने जिसे 1992 में पीवी वी नरसिम्हा राव की गवर्नमेंट ने मॉडिफाई किया था और अब चौतीस साल बाद आई है इंडिया की न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी The National Education Policy 2020 is the first education policy of the 21st century and replaces the 34-year-old National Policy on Education 1986. Built on the foundational pillars of success, equity, quality, affordability and accountability, this policy is aligned to the 2030 agenda for sustainable development and aims to transform india into a vibrant knowledge society and global knowledge superpower by making both school and college education more holistic flexible multidisciplinary suited to 21st century needs and aimed at bringing out the unique capabilities of each student now it's time to have an in-depth knowledge on nep 2020 thank you sister sujata sister cynthia sister elvina for creating a prayerful environment and giving us a gist of nep 2020 now i would like to invite Our dear principal, Dr. Sister Tanuja Vagmare, to deliver a welcome address. Thank you, John. Dear friends, good morning to each one of you. Welcome to the jointly organized national webinar on National Education Policy 2020. Education is a primary prerequisite for the development of a just. an equitable society and to uphold national development the entire world is experiencing rapid changes in the knowledge arena in this context the national education policy 2020 was approved by the government of india the necessity for a new education policy was set in the country for a long time the new education policy has been introduced in keeping with the inadequacies of the preceding education policy and the present and imminent need which can lead to significant transformative transformation in both the school and higher education sector the webinar is an eye opener in this direction 
dear friend, this National Education Policy 2020, restructuring education for quality and enhancement is the need of the hour. And so here we are with you once again. It is our great privilege to collaborate with the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. We are indeed extremely grateful to Dr. Father John P.J., Principal of the Bhopal School of Social Sciences, Dr. Sheena Thomas, the Organizing Secretary. I really thank them from the very depths of my heart for this great opportunity that they have given us. I also thank St. Teresa's Junior College of Education, Mumbai, Principal Sister Saroj CCR, the teachers and the students. Grateful too to St. Aloysius High School, Vasai, Mumbai, Principal Sister Prema CCR, and the teachers too. Holy Cross High School, Vasai, Mumbai, Principal Father Brendan Fatado, and teachers. Gokhale Education Society, Beard College of Education and Research, Dr. Prashant Kale and his dear students. They hail from Parel, Mumbai. I thank all the other participants too, from the different parts of the country, Haryana, Pune, Nagaland, Punjab, and many others too. I'm really indebted to each one of you. I also take this opportunity to thank all our dear sponsors, the resource people. And yes, of course, Dr. Joan, who is the main person behind this national webinar, and all my dear staff members. And yes, Dr. Sheena, Dr. John, and their faculty members too. I really thank each one of you for being here, for cooperating with us, and for making it all a possible event for today. And so, friends, here we are. Ordinary people, while working together, can perform extraordinary things. So good luck to you. Happy viewing. And once again, welcome to each one of you. Thank you. Now, I request Dr. Sister Tanuja Vagmari, Principal of St. Teresa's Institute of Education, Mumbai, to announce the release of the webinar publication. Thank you, Harshita. It is my privilege to officially release the publication of this webinar, Galaxy Link, by Ajanta Publications, which is a UGC-approved, peer-reviewed journal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Tanuja. Also, thank you so much, Sister, for welcoming all the participants. We will now begin with our first session. All the participants, please make a note. All the questions will be addressed towards the end of the session. People watching on YouTube, please put your questions in the comment section. And people on Google Meet, kindly put your questions in the chat box. To be inspired is great, but to inspire is an honor. Our first speaker is deeply interested in policies regarding higher education in India and has active participation in various seminars. He has played instrumental role in giving suggestions to redrafting committee of NEP as a team member of Akhil Bharatiya Vidyarthi Parishad. We welcome you, Sir Milan Sudhakar Marathe. Sir is a retired associate professor from Department of Electronics Engineering of KJ Somaya College of Engineering. He completed his Bachelor in Engineering in the year 1984 and Masters in Engineering in the year 1997 from Veer Mata Jijabai Technological Institute, Mumbai. He was a lecturer there too. Technological Institute, Mumbai. Undergraduate courses like Basic Electrical Engineering and Electronics, Electronic Devices and Circuits, and postgraduate courses like Power Electronic Devices and Design, Foundation of Energy Engineering, 
एडवांस्ड सोलर फोटोवोल्टिक सिस्टम एंड मेनी अदर अटॉट बाय सर मिलिंद इलेक्ट्रिकल नेटवर्क अ नोटबुक फॉर थर्ड सेमेस्टर बीई कोर्स नंदू पब्लिकेशंस मुंबई इज अ बुक पब्लिश्ड बाय हिम ही हैज आल्सो रिटर्न आर्टिकल्स फॉर मेनी जर्नल्स लाइक सर्वे ऑफ आइसलैंडिक डिटेक्शन स्कीम्स पब्लिश्ड इन द इंटरनेशनल जर्नल ऑफ ट्रेंड इन रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट वॉल्यूम थ्री एंड ऑप्टो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिफरेंशियल जॉयस्टिक फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कंट्रोल ऑफ व्हील चेयर्स एंड रोबोट्स पब्लिश्ड इन इंटरनेशनल जर्नल of scientific and engineering research volume 6 he is a member of institute of engineers india he is a life member of indian society of technical education new delhi he was a former vc's nominee on governing body of viva institute of technology at shirgaon he was a former president's nominee executive council north eastern hill university shillong there are many such feathers in his cap the list of his achievements is unending we are very pleased to have you sir now i request sir to take over oh uh, yeah uh, thank you harshita for your kind words and uh, good morning to one and all present over here uh harshita will uh, present the my powerpoint presentation so let us start with today's topic that is decoding national education policy 2020 with respect to school education i am very happy that the organizers have given a thrust to the school education because in national education policy there is a total revamping of school education and a thrust is given on school education so i am very happy to say something about national education policy 2020 with respect to school education next yeah next slide please natasha uh yeah okay uh madam can i share just a minute and if i stuck up somewhere then uh, will it be okay or natasha will do that Yes, so you can do that, Natasha. You can stop sharing, please. Yes, so now you can try. Now, uh, is my first slide visible? Uh, no, so you have not yet presented the screen. Down on your screen, sir. Up arrow will be there. One icon, like an. No, no. I think I have done that, but let me uh, redo it. No, I think I have not given right. Okay, anyway, chalo Harshita, please uh, go to the next slide. Chalo anyway, because okay, I think okay. the right is not given. Okay, so no problem. We'll do it from our end. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So yeah, so when I will start talking about the national education policy, and as a was instrumental in giving inputs to the dr kasturi rangan's committee who was a chairman of redrafting committee of nep 2020 in between i came to know about the mahatma gandhi's nai talim a book basically written in gujarati but uh, i could read the english translation and i was astonished surprised that perhaps Kasturi Rangan must have asked Mahatma Gandhi ji while redrafting the National Education Policy 2020. From the book Nayi Talim of Mahatma Gandhi, I have picked up five important quotes, or I will not say quotes, thoughts Mahatma Gandhi ji said or expressed about the education. And with those five thoughts, keep in mind the present text of NEP 2020. 
and you will find it's a tremendous similarity and what mahatma gandhi ji was saying perhaps it has been reflected in nep 2020 in its fullest capability and in totality first all round development main aim of education should be to draw the best out of person's mind body and soul so this is to say that he must not only develop at the mental level but also at physical spiritual and aesthetic even at intellectual level then second point is mother tongue as the medium of instruction now it is hard for many schools from tamil nadu particularly because tamil nadu state has raised an issue for this particular point when the nep 2020 was declared but mahatma gandhi ji categorically said that mother tongue as the medium of instruction this would help in better understanding and clarity of ideas then the third point which mahatma gandhi ji said that third point will be about he has said next side please ha third point was social awareness and service because if a learned person is not socially aware and if he is not service oriented and when i say service it is a selfless service nobody is intending to get some returns or some motives behind service so social awareness love for motherland and to live in coordination with their fellow citizens is a very important thing for a learned person or an educated person then fourth point he narrated education of heart because the purity of heart is indispensable and purity of personal life is the one indispensable condition for building a sound education here comes the issue of character and mahatma gandhi ji also told the method that this cannot be imparted through books but it can only be done through the living touch of the teacher so he underlined importance of teacher and last but not the least craft centered education he said that handicraft is the means to develop the mind as well as soul and so school must not focus on theoretical knowledge and he also insisted that it should start from pre primary classes so this would help in invoking creativity innovation and it will also enhance the mind hand coordination so these are the five important thoughts of mahatma gandhi about education and now in light of this if we reflect on what nep 2020 says about the school education you will find tremendous similarities now with this much background let us go to the next slide and you will find that in next slide i have told about the simple copy paste from the document where nep 2020 envisions an india centered education system i would like to underline india centered education system that contributes directly to transforming our nation sustainably so transformation of our nation not temporarily sustainably sustainably into equitable and vibrant knowledge society knowledge society should not be the what you can say uh, uh knowledge society should not be of few limited lucky people of the country but it should be for all so it is an equitable with a high quality education next slide so this is the declared vision of national education policy 2020 now just let us go to the background of nep so i will directly go to the point number 2 point number 2 is very important because technology has changed and in and industry 4.0 revolution is knocking the door or why knocking the door it has entered because of that employment avenues businesses business models they are changing very fast mobile phones computers internet penetration is ever increasing and that's why some of the qualities of the student should acquire 
in this 21st century have changed drastically gone those days when i used to have a my core knowledge base in electrical engineering i don't know anything about other subjects i don't know languages i don't know economics i don't know entrepreneurship then i gave two to three interviews i got selected and i remain in the institute for long and now i have just retired so gone those days so what are the competencies required today first is one core competency at least deep knowledge in one or two core subjects second is good knowledge of multidisciplinary subjects like arts languages social sciences economics so you cannot stick only to your subject that sorry i am an electrical engineer and i don't know anything about the social sciences or economics no today's world will not allow the students to argue like this naturally the third point is high computer literacy when i was a student we all were not com students and today every student is a dot com student but today the high computer literacy is very very essential one another important thing has been prop up in this quality that because of the fast changing technology and fast changing business and business models student should acquire a fast capability to learn new things gone those days that whatever you have learnt in your textbooks in your school and college will be available in your professional life for 10 15 years no sorry it will change like anything and that's why you must have to build up a capability to learn new things adapt it assimilate and deliver the solutions for example in my school days sorry my college days i learned fortran and c some part of c++ but now the present day these languages are not frequently used python has come up many new things have come up but today student cannot say that i have not formally taught python in my college days no new things will come and you will have to adapt assimilate and deliver the solutions then the structured thinking excellent communication interpersonal working capabilities creativity innovation intellectual curiosity and last but not the least indian value systems ethical compass character and service attitude so with these core competencies to be developed in the student after school or college education is completed now we look to the national education policy 2020 school next slide please so it is a decoding of the nep 2020 so we must compare what is there in 1986 policy and 2020 policy and i will restrict myself only to school education i am sure that all these things you know already but universalization of pre primary education that is anganwadi and preparatory class sarva shiksha abhiyan has definitely played a very important role for a huge enrollment of the students in standard first but not in a pre primary education and so this is a very typical aspect of this new education policy that before standard 1 3 years of pre primary school connected to anganwadi is introduced then curricular had changed from 10 plus 2 to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 i happened to be the second batch of 10 plus 2 but now it has come to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 then many results uh, sorry many surveys have shown that foundational literacy and numeracy is very poor in the students who is going from 6 to 7 7 to 8 they cannot do simple mathematical calculations they cannot read continuously 10 sentences in their language they cannot comprehend it so these are the facts and that's why government and the policy makers have taken this in mission mode to be achieved by 2025 i will i will quote it afterwards now it has been changed not to 2025 but after that because of the covid 
so foundational literacy and numeracy is a main focus in plus uh, in a foundational stage that is a five stage and first year of the next three stage then there is a systemic tracking of students and their learning levels so tracking is mentioned then equal weightage and no hard separation of subjects no vocational and academic nothing like general stream and vocational stream nothing like arts humanities science nothing like curricular extra curricular and co curricular everything is curricular then home language mother language regional language as the medium of instruction so these are the changes next slide there are a few more so if we go for that concept of school complex or clusters just to share the resources then there is a no differentiation between public and private schools it may be a privately managed schools or government managed schools or jilla parishad schools they all are at par as far as the government policies are concerned then socially and economically economically disadvantaged groups have been taken care because there is a huge dropouts and we all of us are know that in higher education gross enrollment ratio has increased from 25 to 27 in today's context what does it mean 27% of the students of the age group appropriate are entering into the college it means that 63% students are dropped out at various levels in school education and so this policy says that no student should be dropped out and that is a reason why this policy is trying to include each and every student next is from the teachers point of view this policy is saying that para teachers should eventually be phased out i know many managements government and private they appoint a teacher like a shikshan sevak with a hardly 5000 7000 rupees per month not permanent contractual for 3 years that to very minuscule salary no doubt the teachers motivation should not be the salary but you cannot expect a person to perform the duties with the highest quality and uh, what you can say integrity if you are giving him a throw away price but many managements are doing this for cost cutting purpose so this policy has said that para teachers eventually should be phased out then national professional standards for teachers have been come up we will talk it afterwards then naturally the covid has taught us the use of technology in education governance teaching and learning e content so these are some of the major changes next slide now with these background points of backgrounds let us come to the core topic school education now as we have already said that the ecc has been introduced and restructuring of school curriculum is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 what is the reason to include the three years pre first standard into this first and foremost thing is the neuroscience shows that 85% of the child's cumulative brain is developed from 0 to 6 years and we were admitting students in first standard at the age of 6 so this very crucial years were left out with the parents and unfortunately in india there is a various or huge population which will which is suffering from various levels of neglect and deprivations in early childhood and that is the root cause of deficiencies in development of critical areas of the brain and those students coming to first standard they are lagging continuously and so because of the poverty because of the rural and urban divide because of the first learner generation coming to the school at first standard but that parents are not at all literate because of many things family issues there is a neglect and deprivation and so there is a no level playing field 
and that's why this policy says that the policy or the nation or the government in position should take the responsibility of students right from 3 years before first standard so that excellent care nutrition physical and emotional hand holding all these things can be done through government efforts so then there is a huge possibility that the student will each and every student will go ahead with the same quality this is also a very important point as far as inclusion is concerned next now when we go for this there are some salient features of all these stages first thing is all stages are dependent on local traditions ethical reasoning no doubt digital literacy collaborative and exploratory activities and because of that this will generate among the students not only the knowledge but learn how to learn at the later stage we'll come to that but huge flexibility is given for choice of the subjects to the students that is also a very important aspect next now i have quickly summarized this or four stages but i think that you all are aware of this and so i will not go into the detail at this slide but we will take up one stage at a time next please so again it's a pictorial uh, representation uh, i will make the slides available to you i already send it to dr john so she will make it available to all of you next please so again this is a foundational literacy and numeracy to become the highest priority in school i will come to this also after few slides next yeah so this is the initiative taken by the government it's a nipun bharat a national mission on foundational literacy and numeracy so this is the national mission on foundational literacy and numeracy taken up by the government and uh, i request all of you to go through this document prepared by ncrt no doubt it has been prepared in 2021 now the implementation process of nep 2020 has started so there will be some fine tuning because this is not exactly in line with nep 2020 but i will tell you very confidently that there are minor changes so by and large you can say that this document is very good and each and every teacher who is handling the classes up to 6 standard should go through this document very critically next now when i say nipun bharat the literacy has been defined because it's a foundational literacy and numeracy so i will not go into the definition you can read it but universal acquisition of foundational literacy and numeracy skills if they are done in the primary level now this was the this was this is written in that document that it is a, it has to be done by 26 27 and in original document by government it has been mentioned that it is a 2025 but the idea was when 19 2020 it was adopted and if covid would not have been struck then we could have completed in a 5 years but because of the covid it has been postponed up to 26 27 that numeracy uh, foundational literacy and numeracy mission should be completed next now this is what foundational literacy and numeracy skills are here i have predominantly listed out literacy skills or to be very precise 
in literacy at this low level or very tender years of the students it is basically a language and in policy also it has been mentioned that it should be play based exploration based singing dancing interact with teacher one to one in a group so basically language and communication is the thrust in this plus five stage but no writing is mentioned many schools at very early stage start asking the students to write because they want to show how my school is advanced but actually speaking psychological point it is not correct to ask students to write because fine motor capabilities are yet to be developed and so this phase is to develop gross motor capabilities and fine motor capabilities among the students and so writing is not at all advisable and for this policy also very clearly says there is a ban on writing i can say if i want to say with a exaggeration so this particular literacy means language so oral language development phonological awareness because student should be aware about the sound letter and the symbol because that are that those will be proved as a building blocks for future communication then decoding it naturally when you have to when you have been given a symbol you have to decode it so that capability also has to be developed then vocabulary then comes the reading <laughs> because once you are aware about the alphabets sound their sequencing making it into the words the meanings if these are fixed then you can start the reading and that's why in this literacy it's a reading and another very important thing is reading with comprehension otherwise the reading has got no meaning then next important thing is reading with fluency otherwise you will find that students will read i a m m so he is bit not confident about what that a and m is sound and letter the word am what is its meaning and can i comprehend fast and go ahead so reading fluency is also considered as a literacy part then concept about print that is also very important aspect that in schools in this five stage that is the preparatory pre pre preparatory that is a 3 and 2 that is a standard 1 and 2 good amount of print material should be displayed in the school pictures letters with different font with different scripts so all these things will be available in the classroom so that the concept about print will also come to know because it will help in decoding for example if i just see a particular logo even a small kid also can see are yaar it's a cadbury logo so that is the printed material not words picture but he can decode it into it's a cadbury it's a cadbury chocolate he may not be aware that it is a company but he will say chocolate yani ye logo hai so that is the concept about print then slowly you can think about writing at the afterward stage that is the third fourth uh, th th third fourth fifth stage so no doubt ecc writing is not allowed but in foundational literacy and numeracy it is allowed because it is up to standard 5th and because of the covid they have also added standard 6th also in this foundational literacy and the last but not the least culture of reading because once you know how to read comprehend fluency then you get inclined towards reading then the bonding with the books will start and then the whole knowledge spectrum will be open to you and that is the reason why slowly in standard 1 to standard 5 or sometimes it will go up to standard 6 with 
three years pre first standard schooling this literacy competency should be attained among the students so that is the role of teacher next this is about mathematical skills now i will not go into the details but you know that it is the ability to reason and to apply simple numerical concepts in daily life problem solving numbers number concepts then very small operations on numbers addition subtraction and all and so what are the mathematical skills pre number concepts numbers and operations on numbers measurement very important can i measure distance what do you mean by distance what do you mean by measurement itself and when it comes then naturally all mathematical basic operations will be there now it is up to three digits but that can depend on person to person another important thing is that shapes and spatial understanding is required because life is three dimensional and so shapes need not be only two dimensional on a plane but it should be on in space and from that he can go up to the patterns so all these are the mathematical skills next now once we go to the skills literacy as well as numeracy what is the role of teacher so teaching learning process is very important and role of teacher is very clearly defined that encourage children to talk in early age many times it has been observed that teachers are talking more in the class actually it should be 180 degree reversal encourage children to talk creating an engaging learning environment because see the kids in first stage five stage three pre primary and uh, first and second and even in third fourth fifth they are coming for fun but our schools are not fun based discipline systems they are dominant in the schools and so student lose the interest in going to school and so it should be an engaging learning environment you can create number of corners in your class it need not be class means all are sitting and teacher are standing no in one corner there should be a different color clays are kept in another corner different toys are kept dolls are kept different sizes are kept blocks are kept then in another corner there is a material for painting and the students can engage himself or rather teacher should engage the students in different corners and he should increase the interest among the students so that is creating an engaging learning environment then naturally teaching through experiential and real world based pedagogy much has been talked about this another very crucial point is support struggling learners they may be lds learning difficulty students or they may be slow learners teacher has to identify struggling learner and support them go for a hand holding then as i said there should be a print rich environment in class and toy rich environment in class another important thing is continuous assessment and identifying learning gaps and it is only by observation it involves observing children on a continuous basis to understand their level of abilities interest and learning styles what is the challenge unfortunately very few teachers have had an opportunity to get trained in a multi level play based student centric style of learning no doubt the government has come up with the national initiative for school heads and teachers holistic advancement popularly known as nishtha a customized fln package that is a foundational literacy and numeracy package for teachers teaching at this foundational stage so one can very well use this and develop the capabilities of self 
to handle this very tender age group of students next please now let's come to the next stage which is a preparatory stage now in preparatory stage it is from age 8 to 11 it is of 3 years and it's a grade 3 to 4 5th 3rd 4th and 5th now this stage will comprise of reading writing speaking language art science and mathematics but remember now also today it's not there science and mathematics are not separate it's not physics chemistry biology as we used to learn in higher standards it is a integrated it is a science in home it is a science in surrounding it is a exploration of the nature trying to get the questions for from the happenings or processes and once i have formed the question try to get the answer when i stare at the sky the question comes in my mind why sky is blue and not red so this is my question now try to find out the question or formulate the question by looking at the sky or looking near our atmosphere near nature near our surrounding so try to formulate the question and try to answer it so that integrated approach has to be there and as the extension of fine motor capabilities and gross motor capabilities has to be developed sports and physical education is of utmost important unfortunately sports and physical education has given not sufficient weightage in our school system i know our physical training pt mass pt class many times get converted into mathematics or science just because that teacher has to complete the syllabus of maths and science and we were very much interested in going for mass pt so sports and physical education so this will be in standard 3rd 4th and 5th next please then the next stage is middle stage now actually middle stage it's a more formal style of learning it can add social science humanities bit deeper and experiential learning if i am learning science it should be through and through with experimentation no theory no classroom no blackboard can you convert almost all science teaching through experimentation and when i say experimentation it need not be in laboratory not pipet burette stopwatch binocular uh, uh, microscope no it's not like that you can use a very simple material and perform the experiment and try to inculcate scientific concepts among the students so actually 6 7th 8 is a extension of that up to 6 uh, standard 8 <coughs> no choice of subjects has been suggested by many scientists and many educationists but there is a one very important change in nep and that is nothing but about the vocational education we have experienced that the vocational education efforts were completely failed when they were attempted in earlier period itis then vocational courses ultimately student tend to come in the degree because degree has got a some unnecessary but important feature of the individual if i am an iti holder and i am earning 50000 rupees per month i am an electrician i am a carpenter i am a repairing ac and refrigerator learn from iti but ultimately i am not a graduate so such students or such professionals are looked down in the society and that's these were the many reasons why the vocational education failed and so in this policy it has been mentioned that let us have a vocational education intermingled interwoven right from 6 to 12 that is a middle stage and secondary stage so vocational education they are categorized into two parts 6 7 8 is a first category where they have said 
we will give only vocational exposure only vocational exposure vocational exposure but they have very clearly said that 10 days bagless days should be a part of pedagogy you may call it as a social internship you may call it is learning without books and learning outside school but it will be 10 bagless days and what teachers are supposed to do in this it is introduction and awareness about vocations around us so exposure to all students about various professions businesses around them so teachers for 10 days without the bags are expected to take the students group of students to various banks shops malls farms small factories laboratories of higher colleges professional colleges and when you take them to or there what you will do it is not the visit it's not the sightseeing make them aware about what are the job descriptions and skill sets required for that job so if you enter into mall with a group of students ask them that who is the door keeper he is earning something what skill sets you feel that door keeper is required to have and if you want to pursue door keeper as your career what qualities you will have to imbibe and what type of remuneration that door keeper will get then you will enter into the mall then there will be number of shops then there will be boys and girls standing over there to help the buyers and customers so ask the student that that is also an another vocation what qualities they should need then you will pick up the material then you will come to the counter he will calculate and tell you bill so that fellow is an another vocation so like that when you go for this 10 bagless days to different locations actually you have to concentrate on livelihood opportunities what will be the world of work in future what these people involved in this exposure are doing there is a no need always to go to the bank and uh, malls when you just come out of the school you will find that one particular person is washing the car of the society in a way he is individually doing but he is doing service and against that he will be earning livelihood so can you say that the car wash karne wala jo hai it is also a type of profession can you relate yourself ki aapko lagega ki aap professional ho jao car wash karne wala then there will be a rickshaw passing nearby so this is the idea of 10 bagless days every year 6 7th and 8 now the teachers and management can plan that what should be the locations for 6th 7th and 8 even you can go to the small scale industry see the production process can think about the customer satisfaction design aspect why customer satisfaction customer delight so you make aware the students about the businesses and business models in 8th standard and in 6th standard you treat individual person as a probable vocation which student may pursue so that is the first level of vocationalization of education that is exposure then from 9th onwards that is in a secondary stage you will have to actually come to the conclusion and you can go for this so let us come to the secondary stage now here many many things have been changed in nep and teachers should be ready for that first thing is that now there is a flexibility of choice i can tell you that it is a direction of career refer point number 3 it is a direction of career path will be chosen at 9th standard only and will be continued for this stage that is 9 10 11 12 anyway today also after 10th students are choosing career path art science commerce iti diploma many diplomas are there so students are taking decision 
and we call in our colloquial language that they get branched out but this policy says that there is a zero compartmentalization now in education right up to the ug pg what does it mean it means that you choose a particular stream or faculty but you are free to choose the subject so when today student enters into 9th there is a standard books available to him he don't have a choice to choose the subject one mathematics one science split into physics chemistry biology one social science he can go for two or three languages so this syllabus is designed by the teachers or the board of studies or whatever the authorities but there is no choice now here from 9th standard there will be very small modules and the student can opt for the modules no doubt here a career counselor is required to guide the students and parents but my personal experience is now students of this millennium they are very smart when i was in 10th standard i branched out in 11th standard why i chose science at that time i not decided i want to become an engineer but generally aise tha ki jinko 85 ke upar marks milte hai wo science mein jate hai 65 to 85 wale commerce mein jate hai aur 65 ke niche wale kai diploma idhar udhar chale jate hai aur jinko bahut kam mila wo to bechare arts jate hai so we chose the subjects according to that peer pressure but now the students are more smart and that's why they have got clear aspirations and so depending upon their aspirations they can choose the modules so here there is a challenge to the teachers that now the syllabus will not be a book standard even in physics if it is dealing with motion newton's law optics electricity magnetism heat but if the student is very clear that i would like to pursue only electrical engineering why i should learn optics so he can request the teacher to give a smaller module only in electrical part or electrical um, and uh, electricity and magnetism and he can opt for that so there is a huge flexibility and because of that modules will be mentioned and students needs to select the modules according to his or her aspirations and interest at this point of time it may look weird or you may be bit doubtful but a lot of deliberations and study and practical implementable task has been done so this is the one very important change another important thing is in this particular 9 10 11 12 stage it will be really a critical thinking very deeper knowledge courses with great depth will be given activity experimentation projects will be introduced learning by doing will be the buzzword and focus on cognitive affirmative and psychomotor domain actually it is a holistic development of student is in this stage because now we are producing engineers good engineers but we are not sure whether those good engineers are good human beings and engineers so here comes the approach of holistic development next slide so let us go for the holistic development now it has been mentioned very categorically that there are three qualities of any human being or any student or any human being first quality set is a foundational set that is nothing but the foundational literacy and uh, numeracy which normally student get acquired into his schooling days then second category is special qualities for example after schooling if i opt for mass media course then naturally for mass media i will need writing skills presentation skills good communication 
वीडियो मेकिंग रिपोर्ट राइटिंग बट सपोज इफ आई ऑप्ट फॉर इंजीनियरिंग आई नीड स्पेशल क्वालिटीज विच इंजीनियर रिक्वायर्स एंड सो द सेकेंड क्वालिटीज आर स्पेशल कैटेगरी स्पेशल क्वालिटीज विच आर नॉर्मली स्टूडेंट गेट फ्रॉम द कॉलेज एजुकेशन but the third qualities are very important as far as the holistic development of student is concerned and they are called as a traversal qualities or it, actually it is nothing but the qualities required irrespective of profession to make the person good human being what are they no doubt they need not be all need not be developed in a student but this is the list spirit of inquiry it doesn't require only for a science student actually spirit of inquiry is the basis of learning because this will generate thinking process and student will try to become a creative problem solver and because of that we need spirit of inquiry so actually we call spirit of inquiry is a predominant quality of the science student or engineering student but actually it is not irrespective of profession spirit of inquiry has to be there in a good human being passion hard working sincerity creativity innovativeness working with the people very important i don't know any school which formally teach how to work with the people how to work in a team how to become a good leader good team player how to become very sensitive about the people around us empathy sharing and caring respecting diversity in the country respecting democratic values all these things are important we normally say that to acquire any particular knowledge concentration of mind is very important and nowadays multitasking is the buzzword but for multitasking you should have concentration of mind capability and detachment of mind capability but i have not come across in my schooling anywhere where concentration of mind and detachment of mind is taught to me actually it is a very important tool to acquire any type of knowledge and so whole lot of such qualities come under traversal qualities and because of that they should be incorporated and that flexibility is given from 9 10th 11th standard and depending upon my aspiration and my career path i can opt for this acha not only this i will tell you one another important example for ug that is undergraduate course but slightly reflected over here suppose i have decided to be an entrepreneur i will start my enterprise then after ug should i do mba again can i not take few subjects related to management few subject related to labor law few subject related to constitution but in present system this flexibility is not given and that's why student are thrust upon the topics which has been decided by teachers or the experts i will say they are not bad but they they are not student centric they are system centric and that's why we will have to go for whole lot of subjects no doubt 70% core subjects and 30% not core subjects can be opted so this is one major change at secondary stage now if i want to go for a traversal qualities i have listed number of activities which came in my mind but they are not full and final so things can be added modified experimented and many schools are doing next slide so i will not go into the list of activities next slide then in overall nep as i said in major shift education in local language or mother tongue now language is not only the medium of instruction but it is the expression of an individual expression of a society and its collective continuity in culture and that's why don't look language as merely the medium of instruction 
it is immaterial whether i am learning science from my mother tongue marathi or i am learning science from gujarati or i am learning science from english it hardly matters because basically medium of instruction is not important language has got much more deeper meaning and importance in the human life and that's why if you are learning in your mother tongue then the fundamental thinking comes in why if i am not learning in language other than my mother tongue why this basic thinking is not coming actually this is a not complete statement but if i am talking reading learning in the language other than my mother tongue then 30% of my brain capability is busy continuously in translating what i am thinking and what i want to talk that means the 30% capability of the brain is used just as a translator that's the reason why the basic thinking cannot emerge because the fullest capacity of the brain is not utilized me mulga ahe when i say in marathi at understanding level also mujhe samajh mein aata hai me mulga ahe yani i am a boy but if my language is not english and if somebody says that i am boy then my mind and my brain translates that i am a boy into me mulga ahe and then at the understanding level i conclude oh me mulga ahe got it so this is the energy process lost in translation and that is the reason why experts are saying that you should learn in your local language now nep i have categorically mentioned 2019 it's a original draft 472 page draft written by kasturi rangan further slightly modified and 2020 document has come up then further shortened for operational purpose into 76 page english document and 101 page hindi document that's why i specifically mentioned nep 2019 document it strongly suggests that the medium of instruction preferably till grade 8 or at least till grade 5th will be the home language mother language and local language now there is a also multilingualism and that's why three language formula is still there only thing is that it is appeal to the students and parents to think language not only as a medium of instruction but it is the medium of expression of individuality so that is the reason why this policy is very specifically saying that education till 5th and preferably till 8th is in mother tongue but the choice is given and that's why aict also has tried last year that some institutes can have engineering also in mother tongue or not mother tongue state language and surprisingly that experiment is gaining good momentum i don't know at this point of time how many students will opt for that but i am sincerely thinking that option should be available to the students next slide then uh in school education only the emphasis is given for special care of socio economic disadvantaged groups acdgs i will not spend the time but the first acdc is gender women and transgender second acdc g is socio cultural identities like sc st obc muslims migrant communities third is special need like learning difficulties and differently able students and fourth is economically disadvantaged urban poor rural needy these are the four categories and school administration school administrating government authority should take care that no student is left out from the school that's why the tracking many 
uh, what you can say, steps for inclusion, they are suggested. Next. This is just an example that can you give targeted scholarships and some financial support? Experiment of Bihar to give bicycle to the girl student proved good because from Tehsil Center to district headquarter, if the parent has to send his daughter to the school, say 10, 12, 12 kilometers away, then the transportation, safety of the girl in transportation, these issues are there. So instead of that group of girls from that village collectively can travel by bicycle given by the government. So that increase the sustainable ratio, sustenance of the girl students in school. But this cannot be generalized. And so there should be targeted efforts. This policy also says that declaring large population regions of certain SEDGs as a special education zone. But very important thing this policy mentioned is student-teacher ratio 25 as to 1. I know this is not there in many schools, but this is at least mentioned clearly in the policy document. Next. This is an another innovative idea. It is a concept of school complex. Many schools are not equipped with the required resources. And you as data of 1617, I could not today get time to search for the updated data. But they say that 28% of the public primary and 14.8% of upper primary schools are less than 30 students. 1,19,303 are single teacher schools. So small size of a school will not make the campus vibrant. Laboratory equipment, physical resources, like sports material, books, music and art activities, human resources, like teachers of various subjects, music teachers, sports teachers, psychological counselors, they cannot be affordable for a school with a less number of enrollment. So this particular policy has suggested nothing new, but can you use resources of around schools and colleges collectively enter into MOU and form a school complex? A sports teacher can be appointed not for a single school. Managements may not afford it. But the 15, 20 schools around 30 kilometers area can easily appoint one sports teacher and he can move around once in a week, once in a 15 days, once in a month and at least do something for the students of all schools who will not be able to afford individually a sports teacher. Many things can be done. And that's why for optimal learning environment, a minimum critical number of students per division is necessary and that can be done through school complex. Next. Next. detail. Now last point is teachers. Now if this policy has to get successfully implemented, passionate, motivated, highly qualified, professionally trained, well-equipped teachers with mother-like heart for their students at all levels of education is required. And for this, they have very clearly said that teacher education must be four years integrated B.A. after 12th. If you have done UG graduation, okay, two years integrated program of B.A. Achha, you have done master's, then only one year graduation is required. Another important thing is that B.A. colleges should not be standalone institutes. They should be part of multidisciplinary institutes so that they will get acquainted with science faculty, commerce faculty, arts faculty. I am saying science, commerce, arts because it is a present situation. Tomorrow it will not be science, arts, commerce. It will be subject choice which will lead to a particular profession. 
then there can be as there is a special merit scholarship coupled with guaranteed employment in rural areas for brilliant students to become teacher all the vacant post of teachers must be filled all para teacher should be stopped from the system by 2020 was the original document 2019 it will definitely go ahead and closure of substandard teacher education institutes should be done at top priority so these are some of the suggestions given in the nep document next now as it is said it is deep rooted it should be deep rooted in indian culture values and ethos so that is also a bottom line it has been mentioned in a vision of this national education policy also next so to conclude nep 2020 is an india centric indian education system with primacy of indian languages it is forward looking with indigenous wisdom and roots it is integrated inclusive comprehensive and holistic it has a capacity to completely revamp the indian education system this nep will throw away the colonial education policy lock stock barrel so i appeal to all of you the teachers acclimatize with this policy appreciate and accept the philosophy and concerns and revolutionary ideas and then act to implement this with letter and spirit so i appeal to all the members of education fraternity i normally don't use the word stakeholder it gives me the feeling that i am doing some business and there are stakeholders that's why i categorically use the word fraternity education fraternity including government to come forward and take maximum efforts for successful implementation of nep 2020 next so that's all from my side today when i say namaste actually the meaning of namaste is the divine in me respectfully recognizes the divine in you we all are manifestation of one power thank you so that's all from my side i'm uh, very sorry that i was earlier planning to keep some 10 minutes for question answer session but uh, i utilize the full time given to me so i don't think that now there will be a possibility of questions but i left it to dr john and the organizers if you want to go for say for few minutes i am there otherwise i again thank you very much to dr john and the organizers principals of both the institutes st teresa institute and bhopal institute for calling me and giving me an opportunity to interact with great 73 teachers thanks thank you thank you very much sir we are often told to follow our roots since they have a strong foundation thus speaking of roots sir milan threw a light on gandhi ji's nai taaleem and how it can influence today's education as future teachers it's very important that we know how <coughs> national education policy 2020 contribute towards the transformation of our nation with so very well presented and made us aware about thank you sir for teaching us the value of respecting every student's perspective needs and the background they belong if we don't study the history we are bound to repeat it and hence it was very important that we understand the past national education policies tech is the future in every field that you have to do and so in education so very very well put forth how future of education depends on how well 
we adapt to the change and how we update ourselves. Samlin also guided us how national education policy is not just for students, but also for a bright future of teachers. ABCs and one, two, three are not just English alphabets and numbers, but they are also the basic right of education, basic right of people who have chosen the path of literacy. And with that, we are grateful to you, sir, for acknowledging us to Nipun Bharat, which was with us the same motto. Samilin Sudhakar Marathe, thanking you once again on behalf of Dr. Sister Tanuja Wagmare, Principal of St. Teresa's Institute of Education, the entire staff, students of STI. Sir, I would also like to thank you on behalf of Dr. Father John PJ, Principal of the Bhopal School of Social Sciences and everyone present in the webinar today. It was really great to have you on board with us. Thank you, sir. With that, I would like to introduce our next speaker for today, Dr. Agnes De Costa. Ma'am, first of all, with a very warm welcome, I would like to let you know that it's an esteemed pleasure to have you on board with us. Ma'am Agnes is an associate professor at Pushpanjali College of Education, Vasil. She's been a part of this college since 1996, starting her journey as teacher educator. She also has eight years of school teaching experience at St. Augustine's High School, Wasse. While having a master's degree in science in inorganic chemistry, Ma'am has also pursued MA in history as well as MA. Her academic achievements are truly inspiring. Adding to that, Ma'am has done her PhD research on a study of the relationship between teacher effectiveness and multiple intelligence of secondary school teachers under the guidance of her mentor, Dr. Veena Deshmukh, and has also cleared the set examination. Ma'am, as a student of B.Ed myself, I feel so inspired by you, and I'm sure the feelings are mutual with everyone in the meeting right now. Dr. Agnes is the winner of NCERT Award 2012 for Innovative Practices in Teacher Education for research entitled Open Education Resources in Teacher Education. She is also a recognized expert for evaluation of e-content by Central Institute of Educational Technology, NCERT New Delhi. Ma'am, also stood second in University of Mumbai at BA examination 1992. She has also been awarded the best user page for the month of September 2010 by Wiki Educator. An avid supporter of open education resources and blended learning. Dr. Agnes has published following books, A Call for Constructive, Cla Constructive Classrooms and Empowering Leaders, and textbooks for BA on knowledge and curricular gender society, gender school and society. Ma'am, it's an honor to get an opportunity to introduce the person who has published the very books that are an integral and important part of a BA journey. We are really lucky to have you here today. And the list of her achievement goes on and on. The vision of binding education with technology is truly the future of educators as well as learners. The pandemic taught us that the world that runs face-to-face -face can easily be shifted online and everything can go digital. Ma'am, your step towards this great movement is going to change the way we see education. Education is going to increase its boundaries and have far and wide impact because of this. Before we have Ma'am addressing us, I would just like to say a woman can definitely be the change and bring the change. 
it's going to be truly amazing to hear from the lady who is undoubtedly the motivation for all the teachers in making. On that note, welcoming Dr. Agnes de Costa, ma'am, requesting you to take over and thank you. Thank you so much, Siddhi. Thank you so much for those uh, words of appreciation. I don't know whether I'm really worth it, but nonetheless, thank you so much. We just had a very enlightening session by uh, Sir Milan Marathe. The NEP, I have gone through it a number of times. I've conducted many sessions on this, but uh, Sir Milan was like a jeweler. And when a jeweler gives you a diamond, he allows you to explore its various facets. And that was what this morning's session for me was like, sir, where it was like exploring the NEP from another angle. And uh, thanks for that. I say thank you on behalf of everybody who is with us on the Google Meet, as well as those who are watching us on YouTube Live. So I take uh, the session ahead from there. While Sir spoke a lot about school education, I will be looking at how ICT can help to transform uh, education through this wonderful document of NEP 2020. So I'm looking at the role of ICT in ursuring a vibrant knowledge society. Just give me a minute for me to share my screen. Okay, so I hope the screen is visible. If I'll just share just the window, just give me a minute. Yes. So we have, we are looking at the role of ICT in ushering a vibrant knowledge society as has been visualized by NEP 2020. My pleasure to be on this forum and a big thank you to both St. Teresa's Institute of Education as well as the Bhopal School of Social Sciences for conceptualizing this wonderful webinar. Oh, if we look at this graphic, the graphic tells us what society has come through in all these uh, centuries, right from the hunting society that we had we have come now to a super smart society, a society where we have uh, super smart computers, we are ruled by knowledge and information, and such a society is what looks at open knowledge. There is value on easy access. You should be able to access information, knowledge easily. We look forward to organizations that will be learning organizations, and you cannot do this if it is a society that is devoid of knowledge networks. So this yeah. graphic, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you yeah. have a PPT is on the first slide only. It's not moved ahead. Okay, then I'll stop sharing, and I will. Uh, Cinderella, please inform me about this. Yes, yeah, is there any technical glitches? Yeah. Okay, are we on the second slide? Well, it's not on slideshow mode. At least we can't see. It is on slideshow. One. Okay, still not on slideshow. I'll restart my PPT otherwise. No, ma'am, it's not on slideshow. Okay, I, I will restart the... Do you want to, to share? No, but then again, I'll have to send it to you, etc. Just give me a minute. I'll put it on slideshow. Now, Cinderella? Hello? No, ma'am, it's not happening. I think you can just increase the percentage of the slide there. No, and I, can I, I want it on slideshow because that will Maybe be it's the... Maybe a network uh, problem. No, I will... Sorry for the glitch. No problem. No problem.
now cinderella yes, yes now it is thank yes, you sir, so much sir, yeah. sir. okay so we are in a knowledge society as i said a super smart society an information oriented society where there is a lot of focus on open knowledge on easy access uh, where there is a stress on having learning organizations and knowledge networks are the key to everything but in such a situation what is the role played by nep 2020 NEP 2020 offers us five pillars. Cinderella, can you see the five pillars? I hope the PPT is fine now. Cinderella. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. So we have these five pillars of NEP 2020, which are access, equity, quality, affordability, and accountability. So we are going to look at how ICT is going to play an important role in these five pillars. If we want. education to be accessible if we want education to be of good quality if we want it to be equitable affordable and something with a lot of accountability then what is the role going to be played by ict first of all look at how nct helps you in accessing knowledge and i'm sure this is something that is being used by everybody we are already using it so it is not something new that you are going to use once lp has already started its process and once it is into full swing uh, we are going to use this to a greater extent already student teachers and school teachers and even maybe teachers teaching in undergraduate level are using repositories like diksha which is digital information sharing and we should be proud that we have got this material in more than 18 indian languages and there's a variety of material so if you are not using diksha you can have a look at diksha you can see how it will make your work easy and it allows access to education to the teacher as well as to the students there's a variety of material like textbooks there are videos there are evaluation exercises there are lesson plans which can be of very great help many of you i can see are first year students so maybe first year beard students some of you are already teachers and you may be planning your lessons this is a wonderful resource to give you great ideas to make your lessons to make your lesson planning more effective another way that icd can help us in providing access to knowledge is through qr codes i'm not sure how many of you use qr codes for education surely we use qr codes when we go to a shop and we scan a qr code to pay somebody but you can also use this very effectively in education and we have seen this a primary school teacher ranjit singh disley has used this and he went on ahead to win the global teacher award one of his contributions there was the great use of qr codes in making education accessible and also enjoyable to his students uh, i had a student of mine who very recently was sharing what he how he uses qr codes so he creates a lot of learning material uploads it on the web it may be on something like youtube or a blog or even it could be on his own google drive but then he gets a shareable link for it and when students in the class have completed uh, their work and let us say the students in the class are then noisy or there is a tendency for them to be uh, you know to get a little bit restless then what he does is he gives them a mobile and he tells them scan this qr code and go in for some enriched learning you can create such qr codes free of charge all you need to do is go to google go to qr code maker and just put the web link of the resource that is created by you and immediately a qr code is generated such qr codes can be displayed at important spots let's say on your notice board or let's say in your library you have got a felt board you can have these qr codes and students can go in for enriched learning another example of ict providing access to knowledge is through things like presentation translator we just heard sir marathe telling us that we always first think in our mother tongue and 30% of our energy might go in decoding from one language to the other if the speaker is speaking some other language presentation translator is one example where the person may be speaking in one language but as you can see in this graphic everybody else is holding a device in his hands and whatever the presentation it may be in language x 
but you will see it translated into your own mother tongue language why with the help of a presentation translator this is an add on that is now provided by microsoft powerpoint and this is one example where access to knowledge can be provided through the help of ict with the help of presentation translator then all of us must be familiar with moocs massive open online courses again here we have to be very very proud of the fact that we have got so many such moocs on swayam which is our own indigenous platform you can also go and undertake moocs from other platforms like coursera etc why not why stop at just accessing moocs my dear teachers you can create your own moocs there are several platforms like open learn create is one or canvas dot instructure is one where it is very simple to create moocs to create massive open online courses for your students which they can access 24 by 7 at their own they can uh, they are very flexible so they can study on their own you can try this maybe for remedial teaching some of your students may be not having that much capacity as the other students and they are lagging behind it will be a great way to bridge the learning gaps especially now we are saying that two years of covid and certain students have lagged behind think of creating an online course for them which they can access and overcome all those gaps that might have been formed during these two years so ict helps you in uh, providing a lot of strength to that first pillar of adp 2020 and that is access let's look at the second pillar the second pillar is equity look at this graphic and this graphic explains the difference between equality and equity in school or in college very often we stick to equality we treat everybody same yes you should treat everybody same correct but we give everybody also the same amount of resources and we expect them to reach to the same height if you look at this graphic the three people here have a difference in their height of course this is only representational it is very easy for this person here on the extreme right to be able to access these fruits but what about this student who has some kind of a limitation and cannot access these fruits here comes the necessity for equity equity means the person who needs extra support should be given some extra support the person who does not need that extra support fair enough you give him those limited number of resources we give this extra support to this person so that all can access the fruits with equal ease and that is equity in knowledge so ict can help you to achieve this equity in knowledge by providing say multilingual resources we have textbooks nowadays which are multilingual so while you can see a textbook may be in the language of the school that you are attending you can also have a parallel translation in your own language to help you understand better so this kind of resources provide equity in knowledge equity is also needed for people who might have some kind of a learning difficulty such people can be helped with say captioning devices we are all aware of captioning devices if you look at youtube and you just click on that cc tab you will see that whatever the speaker is speaking is available there for you in the text form so person who might have some issue with hearing or a person who might have some issue with the accent of the speaker they can make use of captioning devices we have speech to text software for those who may have a writing difficulty those who may have dysgraphia braille writers e readers are all examples of assistive technology that ict can provide similarly interactive boards will help you to provide equity in uh, knowledge some of you must be also using this if you are using ict in your classrooms if your classrooms are ict enabled then having inbuilt assessment using say platforms like nearpod where you can have or ed puzzle is another example it is your powerpoint presentation mm -hmm. but at the right spot you have stopped your powerpoint presentation and you have put in a question or a small mcq only when the student answers that the student can go ahead so it ensures that the learner is active we used to talk of program learning in the past this is a kind of program learning where the student can be tested at every step 
and then only the student can move forward with that presentation. So such kind of assistive technology also helps you to bring about equity in education. Let's come to the third pillar, quality. What is the use of teaching completing the entire syllabus? Maybe even giving an examination and getting very good percentage, pass percentage for your school, but if it is devoid of quality. Quality education must be cross-disciplinary. And I think this point was amply emphasized by Milin sir when he said that we tend to have a blinkered view. We tend to look at things from only one discipline. And if I say, okay, I'm a, uh, I've got my background of chemistry and I know nothing of any other subject, that will not do in the world of today. So ensuring cross-disciplinary approach or having multimodal approaches to learning will bring about quality in learning. Gone are those days when a teacher could say that, oh, I'm a history teacher. Please don't ask me anything about geography. You cannot afford to do this. Your textbooks, your content itself is multidisciplinary and therefore for good quality, cross-disciplinary multimodal approaches are a must. Sir touched upon this, that is national professional standards for teachers. All those who are teachers here, all those who are teachers to be, I will advise you that go through these national professional standards for teachers. Earlier it was okay, you entered in as an assistant teacher or you entered in as a school teacher and by the time you retired also, you were a teacher only. This will be replaced according to NEP, the national professional standards for teachers are being advocated where you will have levels of teachers, beginner teacher, Pragmi Shikshak, Proficient Teacher, Pravin Shikshak, Expert Teacher, Kushal Shikshak, and a lead Teacher or a Pramukh Shikshak. And this need not be based on your tenure. You may be in the profession for three years, but suppose you show the skills of moving from one level to the other, your school will be very happy to promote you from one level to the other, of course, provided you have completed certain criteria provided you have exhibited certain uh, kind of skills. Such kind of teachers can then lead others. And this has got nothing to do with your age. It has got nothing to do with your tenure. It only has got to do with what output you are showing in the class. So for having such kind of quality in teaching, for generating quality teachers, surely ICT is going to provide much uh, of inputs. I'll share with you one example. Uh, by the way, continuous professional development for teachers is going to be compulsory with NEP being rolled out. This means every school teacher will undergo 50 hours of professional development. Right now, what you're doing is a kind of professional development. So throughout the year, you will be expected to go in for 50 such hours of continuous professional development. And these courses could be, or these programs could be organized by your own institution, or they could be organized, say, by an organization, maybe a teacher education college. I'll give you one example. A few days ago, I took a session on just the beginnings, the basics of artificial intelligence for my first year beard students. And then I just told them about the CBSE website. If you go to the CBSE website, you have got one place there where it is AI for all, artificial intelligence for all. So the lecture that I gave them was just a basic lecture. But I encouraged my students to go in for this AI for all course. It's a four hour course maximum. And students completed that course and immediately they were given two badges. One was AI awareness and one was AI appreciate. So I just displayed the certificate of one of my students who got this certificate after completing the four, uh, four hour program. This is an example of continuous professional development for teachers. Many a time we are unaware of what is available to us and all this is available free of cost. So please make use of portals like the CBSE. This is part of India's Digital India Initiative. There are nine pillars under Digital India and under that, one of the things is education. How can ICT boost education? So I would advise all teachers to someday go through the CBSE site 
and it's irrespective. You may be the state board school, you may be an ICAC, whatever school. Anybody can do this course, and there may be many such courses coming. Perhaps you can also go someday to the CIET site, Central Institute of Educational Technology. And every month end, they have four to five days of professional development for teachers. You can attend those uh, YouTube lectures. They are at a very convenient time, four o'clock to five o'clock, every month end. And once you finish that and you do their little quiz based on those four to five sessions, you are given a certificate saying that you have completed so-and-so course with so much percent of marks. So I would advise all teachers to go into such kind of uh, opportunities which are available to us all under our Ministry of Education. So this was our third pillar, ICT for quality. ICT for affordability. Yes, we talk of education, but it should we talk of ICT. But ICT should also be affordable. And many of you must be thinking, okay, ma'am, you're talking of uh, such things, but we don't, we cannot afford it, maybe. ICD ensures affordability. For example, buying a textbook, a simple textbook, will cost you nothing less than 150 to 200 rupees. But going through OERs, open education resources, you will find plenty of these OERs that are there. There are worldwide. OER Commons, for example, is a global body. But even within our country, we have got many OERs which are created. And these OERs can be revised, they can be reused. These are the five R's of OERs. You can retain it. A library book, after one week, you have to return it. But an OER, which is a digital resource, you can keep it forever. You can reuse it. And as many times as you want, you can reuse it. You can revise it according to the license, of course. Some of them may not allow you to revise. But you can revise, you can tweak it, you can adjust it according to your students. You can remix. Let us say you have got one OER and another OER. You can combine the two together. You can redistribute it. So this is something that has revolutionized education in the past decade or so. This makes education very affordable. And OERs is a boon from ICT. Look at this <coughs> example. Uh, a student of mine was taking a virtual tour of the Taj. So she had, to, she had to be teaching the students Indian architecture. She wanted to teach them about the Taj. While the NEP talks of 10 bagless days, that also Sir emphasized. It, it should be used to say, go around, look at various occupations, maybe go and visit uh, places of interest. This can be done within your locality. But what if it comes to visiting some place which is very far, which you cannot uh, easily access? In that case, if you cannot go there physically, of course, going there physically is the best option. But if you cannot go there physically, then going there on a virtual tour is so nice. And let me take this opportunity to just take you on a virtual tour of a place. So let me just shift my tabs. I'll take you on a virtual tour to the Taj. So this is from Google Arts. Uh, okay. So we will go to the Taj. I'm sure you can see my um, screen right now. Cinderella, can you just give me a yes? Or Cinderella, or anybody? Yes. yes, okay, thank you. So we are right now on a virtual tour of the Taj. This, my dear friends, is from artsandculture.google.com where you can go and virtually visit different places. So what is a virtual visit? It is not just going there, but exploring it from all angles. For example, here we are on the top of the Taj and I can actually get a 360 degree view. I can actually get a 360 degree view. I can look at what the minarets are like. I can see what the dome is like. Okay, then you can, let's go down further. Let's explore the Taj still further. So here you are, you have got, if you go to the Taj, then on one side you have got a mosque and in the center is the Taj, right? So you can even explore, you can even see the present situation. I think when we personally go there, 
nobody will allow you to go to a, a first floor etc perhaps so you can actually see it from places which are otherwise inaccessible you can see the yamuna at the back right that's the river yamuna at the back so you can follow these arrows you can follow these arrows and you can explore different facets of all those monuments which are on google arts and culture dot uh, arts and culture dot google dot com that's the name of the site or take this view for example so in this manner you can explore different monuments some of you must have like this is from the masjid the mosque which is on one side of the taj you can see the red sandstone if you're physically there sometimes your tour operator just gives you one hour to explore here you can sit and explore for as long as you want and in this manner one can go to different uh, such kind of monuments one can also have a look at virtual laboratories i'm sure many of you must be uh, looking at uh, you must be already using virtual laboratories uh, you must have used things like um, o labs etc is my ppt visible now cinderella Yes, ma'am. You're back to the video. Yeah, back to the video. Okay. So, this can make education very affordable, and all these are free of cost. Compare it with the cost of actually visiting a place. Of course, if the place is very much in your vicinity, you should physically visit it. But otherwise, virtual labs, virtual visits of these kind, will help in making education more meaningful. We come next to the the next pillar of ICT. we spoke about equity we spoke about affordability we spoke about access now here is ict in ensuring accountability we have e governance being practiced your website for example is an example of e governance of your institution so it gives everybody anybody interested in your school your parents your students your alumni they can all get an idea of what's happening so ict helps in ensuring accountability there can be seamless integration across various departments say if there is a small school and you are collaborating with another school sir spoke about clusters and such kind of school complexes will be heard of more in the days to come so let us say within a radius of say 5 to 10 kilometers you are about five schools and you are in one cluster you may not physically go and visit that school to know what exactly they are doing or what resources they have created but you can be sharing these kind of resources of course using ict and thus you can make your education more accountable uh, it is envisioned that one of the nine pillars of uh, digital india which is e kranti they talk of connecting schools with broadband maybe this has not yet come out with full force but we do hope in the days to come schools will be connected with broadband and help us share our resources so teachers instead of every teacher from every school creating a resource if good resources good quality resources are shared remember i spoke about the different levels of teachers so if there are teachers who are uh, in the who have got many years of experience or a lot of let us say ict experience and they are good at creating such kind of resources they can help to share them with others that makes our education more accountable this is something that is more related to undergraduate education not to up to class 12 beyond class 12 but worth knowing because at some stage or the other we are all going to be talking of this the nep talks of academic bank of credits and it's already rolled out it is already rolled out this academic bank of credits will be very useful in the years to come for example delhi university from this year they are starting their four year undergraduate program and we expect that in the times to come other uh, universities will also follow suit now it is don't get this thought in your mind that oh i did a three year undergraduate program don't tell me now ba or bsc is going to be four years that's optional three years yes but if you want to do a fourth year with research you are welcome to do a fourth year with research and that can even give you a direct leeway to doing your doctorate so after four years of undergraduate program you can directly move on to research or if you wish you can continue with your masters 
or you can directly move on to the PhD program, it says. The fourth year will be dedicated mostly to research. And there, this academic rank of credits is going to play, play an important role. Now, suppose you are in Institution A. And let us say when I joined Institution A, these were my subjects that I took. We are already in the credit-based system. We know that. So every semester, every semester of your undergraduate exam uh, course, you will be expected to do minimum 20 to 22 credits. So this is an example. I've just taken a hypothetical example. Let us say I take chemistry for four credits, but I also like literature and that I'll take for four credits. Let's say I take a two credit course in artificial intelligence, a two credit course in finance, a four credit course in mathematics and a four credit course in uh, physics. And that will give me a total of 20 credits for my semester one. But let us say at the end of semester one, due to some reason, I want to move to another institution. Because maybe that institution got certain subjects, certain courses, which my institution A is not offering. Or let us say I'm relocating to a new place after semester one. Whatever be the reasons, or for whatever reasons you want to move from institution A to institution B, you can do it taking these 20 credits that you have got from institution A. These 20 credits, your institution A has to deposit it in your name, of course, in the academic bank of credits. It will be verified by your institution A, that student so-and-so was a student of ours. This student has taken these 20 credits. This is the performance of that student in these, these subjects. The student was here from so-and-so to so-and-so, month so-and-so, year so-and-so, till so-and-so. And now that student has moved. That student will take these credits and redeem these credits. They are not gone waste. They are redeemed in institution B. That student can continue the education in institution B. Tomorrow you want to go to institution C, you can go to institution C also. Say, due to some reason, after two semesters or after one year of studying, you have to take a break for some reason. No worries. No worries. Whatever credits you have got from your semester one and two are there in your academic bank of credits. After one year, you decide to come back. After two years, you decide to come back. You will take those credits and move ahead. So this is the beauty of the academic bank of credits. And this is already functional. Many institutions are part of the academic bank of credits. Slowly, all institutions will have to be part of this so that this transfer of credits from one institution to the other becomes easy. So institution B has to no need to contact institution A. Institution B just goes and sees what is in the academic bank of credits account of students so and so. And the full idea, like a transcript, is got. And we can decide to give admission to that student and allow the student to continue the education from there. So this makes, uh, this is where ICT is bringing in accountability in education. I'm not talking about certain emerging technologies, which are called as disruptive technologies. When we use this word disruptive, it's not disruption. It is not destructive, mind you. It's something that has changed the face of the world. Uh, take, for example, your simple mobile. With the mobile in your hand, I'm sure the wristwatch has gone. Your alarm clock is somewhere in some room, right? You're not using it any longer. Your camera, you've given up on your camera. So one mobile has replaced so many other gadgets. Such a kind of technology is called as a disruptive technology. And these disruptive technologies, emerging technologies, are coming up day by day. You will recognize this is Sophia the Robo. And she's also a citizen. Of, yes, hello. Your yeah, uh, PPT is not uh, going ahead, ma'am. Okay, yes, you don't have a virtual. Uh, okay, I will. I will. One minute. I was still on virtual this thing. Okay, fine. So That's slide seven, number seven. Slide okay, number seven. I will. From there on. I will. Yes, I will. I spoke about academic bank of credits, but I will. Sometimes it gets stuck, maybe. Okay, Cinderella, accountability is visible. ICT in ensuring yes, accountability. Yes, yes, now it is Sorry. visible. Yeah. Sorry. So this is what I spoke about. Yeah, my but it's dear. not on slideshow mode. Okay. It's not on slideshow mode.
Yes, in Rala now, accountability, ICT and ensuring. No, no? that slide is there, but it's not on slideshow mode. No? Okay, it's not on slideshow mode. Okay, then shall I just show it this way? That's not yeah, that's okay, ma'am. You can just increase the size slide. of the slide. Just try once. Cinderella? Hello? It's not going on slide. So you can just increase uh, the size from down there, percentage. Yeah, and yeah then I, I can think we can that. go ahead. Yeah. Fine. Is this better, Cinderella? Uh, you're not sharing, ma'am, right now. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Is that fine, Cinderella? No. I yes, it's fine. It. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. Yeah. fine. So, uh, we have this academic bank of credits that I spoke about. This is where you will be able to redeem your credits from one to the other. Uh, I was talking of disruptive technologies and disruptive technologies are something where you can, you know, you're just shaken out of a very comfortable zone perhaps that you were in. And these kind of disruptive technologies, like you must have heard of Sophia, the robo, and uh, she is also a citizen of Saudi Arabia. If you hear Sophia talking, you will wonder whether it is a human who is doing this talking. So this, these kind of technologies are going to become more and more common in the days to come. I will share with you, I will show you certain examples of how disruptive technologies are have already, overta have already made their entry into education. What I'm showing you now are examples which are not basically from the, an app I'm showing you. And this app is being used widely all the world over. So we'll just take one, uh, we'll take this case of augmented reality textbook. So this is an augmented reality textbook uh, by Al Rupa. Al Rupa is an app. Certain part of it is free. You can download that app on your mobile and certain part of it you will be able to see without payment. Certain things are of course paid features. I'll just show you this uh, case of a, uh, I have muted the sound so that because there's only music. Here is a textbook and this textbook that you have got is a textbook that talks about, it's in German, it's a textbook that talks about eclipses and you can see here the two-dimensional diagram, you can see how the two-dimensional diagram is being converted through a three-dimensional figure. You can see this. So, this the two-dimensional picture that you have in your book. And this book is somebody's mic on in the beach. Hello. Yeah. So this two-dimensional figure if you keep your device, the device is below the, uh, the device is being used here to access the app Al Rupa and whatever pictures are there are being seen by the child in 3D form. So when we talk of eclipses, it is very difficult to show it in a picture form or uh, in the form of a figure. Here also you can see how light travels through this tube. So the picture is being converted into a 3D graphic which will make learning so much more easier. Or here is an example of total internal reflection that you have. This one, I'll just take it a little back. In our textbook, everything is two-dimensional and flat. But using this app, you can see how the entire thing gets converted into a 3D form. So such kind of uh, apps are available. And these apps are surely going to be changing the entire phase of education in the days to come. Another thing that is very interesting is the use of robotics that will probably make an entry into classroom. I'll share with you two case studies that we have got here. The first one is of this child. This child you can see in this picture is a girl, Emily. Now, Emily had an, she is a cancer patient. And she used to have uh, difficulty going to class because uh, in case of Emily, 
she was undergoing chemotherapy and because of chemotherapy uh, when she would go back to class she would pick up infections her whole uh, immune system was poor so therefore emily doesn't go to class this is emily's robo and the name of this robo is emily bot so emily bot goes to class you can see in this picture here the bot the robo is sitting in class in emily's place and what is emily doing emily is at home with an ipad and this robo is connected to her ipad so with the help of that ipad she can see whatever is happening in class she can hear her teacher if she has to ask a doubt she has to just click on her ipad and the robo will start blinking it has a camera to take the lessons live it can also give us hint or a signal to the teacher i have a doubt so emily is sitting at home controlling her robo with the help of her ipad the robo starts blinking she will type a question on her ipad or maybe she will even speak it aloud and the teacher can hear the question and answer a doubt suppose emily wants to express happiness let's say there's a joke crack and the entire class is laughing emily also can laugh with, through the robo of course if she doesn't want to disturb she just wants to talk to her neighbor she has got that application also the ipad will allow her even that in this manner emily participated in every class activity but not physically there was a proxy emily's proxy the robo was sitting in class and the entire sessions she was attending from home she used to have a lot of difficulty having her food because no appetite etc so what the teacher would do was when the school children were having their lunch break emily would sit among the friends and her friends would goad emily emily eat eat something and emily would be encouraged to eat even though she had no appetite so her uh, parents found this very very uh, it was a very rewarding experience and they were happy that the socialization that she was missing was made up for in this through this robo here's another example of a child Uh, this is finn and finn had a brain tumor here is finn sitting in his home he could not attend school because of his brain tumor but his bot his robo went into class and here is finn with his ipad getting to know whatever is happening in class studies not just studies you can see this second picture here and you can see the kids are playing football and here here is the robo sitting with his friends and through the robo finn is enjoying the football game here is emily's uh, sorry finn's teacher the robo was taken even to visit the zoo so you have this picture of the robo with the gorillas there and finn is sitting finn the child with the brain tumor is sitting in his home and watching the gorillas through the eyes of his robo of course one thought must have come to the minds of many people that uh, what about the cost of this this would be something that is very expensive yeah it is costly at present it is around 3 lakhs just that one robo but what schools abroad have done is they have invested in three four such robos and any child who is undergoing such kind of extensive treatment can take that robo use it for say 7 8 months one year as long as the treatment is going on so it is lent it is given for some time period to the students there are companies also which are sponsoring this so at present it may be expensive but i guess in the course of time to come such kind of gadgets will become uh, cheaper and that is how icd can help in providing equity let me now take you to another very interesting cab you must have all heard of chatbots and very often when we are on some website and all a chatbot comes up and a chatbot wants to talk to us right now chatbots are used for chatting to a great extent they are used for shopping and other ex, uh, of other such kind of experiences here is kuki when you all are free you can try chatting with kuki kuki.ai that's the name of the site so i'll just show you few uh, examples of remember kuki is not a person there i'm going to be chatting with a robo this is artificial intelligence in play so i'm going to talk to kuki so let me just ask kuki a few questions i've chatted with her before i'll sign in with my google account 
you, you can just sign with your Google account and you can chat with Kuki. She's not an educational robot, but imagine having such a robot for education and how it can help children. So here, now for example, let me start. I'll say hi, Kuki. So when I say hi, Kuki, immediately Kuki's answer is there. Hi there, Cynthia. Okay, so that's the name that I'm more familiar, uh, commonly known as. So Kuki said hi to me. Uh, let me ask Kuki uh, for the recipe, some recipe. Kuki, how do we make, let us say, pav bhaji? Okay, I'm just asking Kuki for the recipe of pav bhaji. Uh, okay, the spelling of pav bhaji was wrong. She's saying, not sure, I was near, not that creative. Okay, I'll ask for pav bhaji recipe. Let's see whether she answers this time. Okay, so she says, she's thinking of adding it. Let me ask something what is more familiar. I need to make some pasta. So let's see what she says. And she's saying, oh, thank you for my feedback. Okay, she's not ready to answer my questions. Okay, I'll ask her for the weather in Bhopal. I'll ask her for the weather in Bhopal. Let's see whether Kuki can answer. Okay, since she chats with you very much like, okay, here. Yeah. Uh, this definitely cannot be a human being at the other end, okay? This is artificial intelligence. And she's telling me everything about the weather in Bhopal. Let me ask her for the weather in Mumbai. And of course, you do this on Alexa and all your other... Yeah, so there immediately the weather in Mumbai for the next seven days. Suppose we ask her a question. What is artificial intelligence? Now, all this is data-driven. No human being can type at this speed and give them information to me so soon. Uh, I'll ask her a question like, Cookie, what are you good at? Let us see what she says. What I oh, so she immediately tells me, ah, I can chat with you and keep you company. I can tell jokes, stories, poems, etc., etc., whatever she can do. So she, she immediately gives me about that. If I say cookie, I am feeling sad. Let me see what she says to that. She, I said cookie, I'm feeling sad, and she says, Okay, bring out the clowns. We've got a sad one here. Why are you sad, Cynthia? Suppose I say. I have a cold. So it, these are chat box. And these chat box, she was telling me, I hope you feel better soon, Cynthia. It's not nice for humans to have colds. Fortunately, we have robo. We robos have virus protection and cannot catch colds and nasty bugs. My dear friends, what I did right now was just giving you an idea of how quick robos can be to answer our queries they are all data driven. So when there's a lot of data put in, meaningful data put in, then that kind of data gets converted to their answers. The more meaningful data you put in, the more experiences your robot has, the more will be the better will be the output. And we look at such kind of things in University of Georgia. Right now, they have a teaching assistant who is a robot. An entire subject, an entire course is taught by a robot. This may sound like science fiction to us here today, but I say in the next few years, this may be realities. Let me just continue with uh, further the uh, where we stopped the PPT. So yes, so we were talking of such kind of change uh, changes that we expect. We spoke to Kuki. Now, what, where does that bring us, uh, or where does any what does NEP tell us? NEP tells us that we will soon have a national educational technology forum. A forum where we will look at how ICT can be used to help us in all these areas. That is learning, assessment, planning, etc. It will advise governments on how technology can be blended meaningfully, seamlessly in education. It will also help us to have institutions that are more ICT driven. The question is, we are in a world where ICT is dominating already. And even Sir spoke about this. Are we ready for jobs? 
sir spoke about it from the school level when you take your students out and take them to the mall they are watching people in different jobs they are looking at different professions the same thing when they come to undergraduate level when they come after class 12 there is the need to skill reskill and deskill keeping in mind that technologies are changing so right when they are in their undergraduate level we want students to look at their subject in relation to ict their subject in relation to new technologies and here higher education will be expected to have such kind of courses like for example artificial intelligence with x what is x i'll show you in another example so we will have x we are expected to have courses which are more profession driven which are more vocation driven so we will not be just learning like for example when uh, i have done my bsc and masters in chemistry but if you ask me if you put me into a chemical industry i'll be a zero there i know nothing i do not know like we had an entire paper drugs and dyes but if you ask me to make an actual drug if you ask me to make an actual medicine i will i'll be a zero there that is because of lack of practical exposure so now undergraduate courses will be expected to have such kind of a professional slant a vocational slant here is a beautiful example of how school students mind you school students they have seen problems around them and they have integrated ict they have integrated uh, technology to come up with solutions this is an idea from students from uh, dew and daman and there were students who used to cross a garbage tin and the garbage used to be overflowing and stinking so they came up with this idea when the garbage tin is filled when the bin is filled up to a certain level immediately the alarm will be sent the message will be sent to the municipality authorities that so and so bin at so and so place is filled come and empty it so you can see two bins there one for biodegradable one for non biodegradable waste and the municipality gets a message as soon as the bin gets filled up to a preset level this was invented by class 9 students this is the product of design thinking you see a difficulty you see an impediment you use that as you leverage that there is a difficulty there will be a solution there is a problem there will be a solution and they came up with this solution this is what schools are expected to be in future nep supports such kind of thinking here is another example of a student from a school in new delhi and this is where perhaps the student saw his some elderly person in the house always forgetful uh, not remembering to take his or her medicines on time sometimes the person gets lost goes somewhere roaming and does not find the way home here is a walking stick in the hands of that person is a walking stick as you can see and this walking stick is ict enabled it is uh, a walking stick which can count the steps of the person it can remind the person of medicine you have not taken your medicine it is 12 o'clock now you have to take so and so medicine it can locate the person so if the person has lingered away from his locality it can send a message to the home people that grandpa is gone so and so place or if the home people are searching for him then through gps system you can locate where that person has gone there's an emergency alarm let's say the person has gone too far away from his home then there's an emergency alarm the person also can ring an emergency alarm if required let's say the person is in proper senses and let us say the person uh, is attacked by somebody so there's an emergency alarm there's a fall detector so if the person falls then the there will be immediately a message sent to the relatives so and so person has fallen there's a torch all this done by a class 10 student from delhi this is the kind of innovation that we are talking about these kind of experiments will are most supported by the nep i want to just conclude with so uh, what i want to say is we'll leave some time for uh, questions and queries we just have enough time for that uh, we have certain i have certain quotes for you because certain things that might be in your mind will be are we trying to replace teachers if ict is going to take over so many things of course the automated tasks the tasks that repetitive tasks like 
what uh, attendance or let us say creation of report cards or just finding out how many students fall between this age group and that age group. These kind of repetitive tasks can definitely be taken over by ICT, leaving the teacher with more time for, let us say, creative work. There is no fear that teachers will be replaced. I don't think. But if you're a bad teacher, yes, ICT may replace a bad teacher. I have four quotes here and I want to, to leave you with reflection on these quotes. One is, I don't use ICT in my classroom because it's a buzzword or a trend. I use it because connecting my kids with the world will prepare them for the future. Those of us who have a fear, we are not doing it for fashion's sake. We are not doing it because it's a trend. We are talking about ICT because this is the world of the future. Technology will not replace great teachers. So don't fear. If you're a good teacher, you won't be replaced. But technology in the hand of great teachers will definitely be transformational. Technology is not just a tool in terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them. The teacher is the most important and that comes from uh, Bill Gates himself. Technology alone isn't going to improve student achievement. What we need is the best combination is where great teachers working with technology will help to engage students in the pursuit of learning that they need. So the, all these quotes, and this is my belief also, I don't think technology can replace a, great, a good teacher. But it can always help a good teacher to become better. And that's what we hope for. So NEP 2020, with its focus on the five pillars of access, equity, affordability, etc., all this uh, is talking about using of ICT. There's a lot of focus given to ICT in the entire document, but it has to be used very wisely. And as Milan sir had so rightly pointed out, without losing focus on our value system. Once we are only, if we do not take that value system into mind, all the great values that we stand for, truth, respect for everybody, all these value systems that we have always stood for should never be out of our sight. So a very good blend of values, our traditional knowledge, our ITK, indigenous technical knowledge systems that we have, along with something modern and contemporary like ICT, is definitely going to leverage us into a shining star in the knowledge economy. So we have got five minutes or so for queries. So if there are queries coming up, I would like to take them on. And meanwhile, I will also have a look at the queries on the YouTube. So any queries, those who are on, those who are on our Google Meet, you can unmute yourself and ask your query. In short, others, we can you can post your queries on. You can post your queries on. One second, just let me turn up the volume here. One second. Hello. Yes, any queries? You can either type them in your chat box. Yes, Ravi Prakash says that teachers' honor and importance will always remain as the sun shines always. Yes, Ravi Prakash, I saw your comment on YouTube and that's absolutely right. Nobody can replace a good teacher. Any queries? Cinderella, any queries coming up there? No, ma'am, no. I'm just checking, but uh, there are no queries. There are some comments written for your session. Yeah, the comments I got, yes. Yes, there's a query from Lokesh uh, who says, how can ICT tool be useful in rural area? because of lack of infrastructure and quality uh, teacher. Yes, Lokesh, uh, let me tell you, I'm speaking from a place which is rural. I'm not speaking from Mumbai. My place is some 50 kilometer away from Mumbai where 
electricity still great issues network also great issues and uh, you know uh, there is i mean it may not be as bad as some other places so infrastructure there when you say digital infrastructure uh, can help greatly digital infrastructure will help to greatly is one of the pillars of um, the digital india that we talk about e kranti you look at digital india look at the nine pillars and e kranti is talking of bringing about broadband in remote villages also sir definitely lokesh sir there will be improvement i am talking of 20 years 23 years ago sir when to make one phone call on one mobile we had to spend 8 rupees and all that for one minute call and not very long ago 20 years ago today our mobile calls are free we can talk to any part of the world and it is so easy so let us be hopeful even in the villages and all such changes will come yes a lot of onus is on the government to do this the uh, immediate see especially in the villages the quality teachers are concerned sir whether we are in a village or whether we are in urban setup i must say some of our indian villages have got the best quality teachers which maybe even urban areas may not have we have read of uh, things like you know in bihar and all where we have got teachers who are uh, capable of, where students are learning under them and getting into very prestigious institutions or in maharashtra we have one icon in the form of ranjit singh disle who lives in a remote very village and where he used ict to revolutionize education so sir lokesh sir i hope i answered your question uh, infrastructure with government help hopefully this comes soon and where quality teacher is concerned aap kahan se ho isse farak nahi padta hai dil mein fir sirf ek khwahish honi chahiye we should just have the passion that yes i can be a quality teacher and i think that will greatly help i hope i answered your question lokesh sir yes any more queries yes ravi prakash jain there are many dedicated teachers in remote uh, areas and that is really a blessing to us yes yes any more queries if not i think cinderella it's time to wind up this session and leave in time for the next person yes thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am yes sir yeah. learning together. yeah learning together even when we are apart is an absolute we have learned how i see you are not audible ria you are not audible am i audible now am i audible ma'am Mama, am I audible? Yes, Ria. Okay. Sorry. Learning together, even when we are apart, is an absolute goal of India's education system. And today, we have learned how ICT can help transform and usher a vibrant educational society. In today's era, yeah, we all succumb. you yeah, just leave the meet and join back yeah yeah sure am i audible now Yes, now you are able. Go ahead. Okay, I am so sorry. Then it happens. No problem. Learning together, even when we are apart, is an absolute goal of India's education system. And today we have learned how ICT can help transform vibrant educational society. 
In today's era, we all succumb to the superficial race of knowledge and information, and thus easy access and open learning is necessary. And that is where the role of NEP comes forward. I am sure we will all agree upon how crucial the National Education Policy 2020 and its fundamentals are for the education system. As ma'am mentioned in her talk, we are often unaware of the various privileges available to us. Thus, thanks ma'am for making us aware of the same. NEP 2020 is truly a new vision that our country needs to acquire and to shed some more light on the same, Professor Dr. Agnes de Costa is here with us today. I would like to extend my humble gratitude Costa for sharing her insights with us. It has truly been an honor to have you here with us, ma'am. Your ideas and views about restructuring education and quality enhancement has definitely made us think about the two domains as a collaborative aspect in a positive way. I'd like to thank you on the behalf of our respected principal, Sister Dr. Tanuja Wagma of St. Teresa's for inspiring and empowering us. I would also like to thank you on the behalf of Bhopal School of Social Sciences and their respected principal, Father Dr. John PJ for enlightening us with your expertise. I would now ask Dr. So Seema Yadav from the Bhopal School of Social Sciences to carry forward the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So good, good afternoon to all present here in the virtual meeting gathering. I, Seema Yadav, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, the Bhopal School of Social Sciences, Welcome you all in the third session of the national webinar on national education policy 2020, Reconstructing Education for Quality Enhancement, jointly organized by St. Teresa's Institute of Education, Mumbai, and the Bhopal School of Social Sciences, Bhopal. For the third session of the national webinar, we have among us Professor Dr. Gyanendra Nath Tiwari, Professor, Department of Teacher Education, Nagaland University, Kohima Campus, Nagaland. Professor Gyanin Nath Tiwari, sir, is university merit holder in his PG degree, MSc Chemistry, and MED gold medalist in University of Allahabad. He is UGC Care Net in Education and DPhil Education. He is having the teaching experience of more than 21 years for teaching in UG and PG levels. Under his guidance, Eight PhD scholars have been awarded their PhD degrees and four are getting his guidance in their doctoral degrees. Admiring his professional contribution in the field of education, I would like to inform you all that Professor Ganin uh, Tiwari sir is associated with NIOS, NCERT, IGNO, Commonwealth of Learning, Swayam Prabha Channel, Swayam Digital Platform, MIT Academic staff college and various universities. Professor Tiwari is member of various committees, visiting team member of NCT, resource person, expert and examiner. Professor Tiwari is member of academic bodies of MIT University, Uttar Pradesh, presently associated with DRC, Board of Professional Studies, School Board, Board of Studies and different other committees of different universities. I would like to share with you all that Professor Tiwari has been awarded by Laloji Derawal Gold Medal in 2001 by University of Allahabad, Sri Shiksha God of Samman 2020 and National Excellence Award in 2021 for Innovative Practices in Education. Professor Tiwari has published 14 books in which one from international publisher and 13 from national publisher. He has published 36 research papers in national and international journals. And I should say, yes, published 15 uh, chapters in edited books. He has presented so many chapters, so many papers in national and international conferences and seminars. Professor Tiwari is a member of International Advisory Board of European Academic Research, Romania, and IATE. Associate Professor, in Jyotirmay Journal of Educational Research, 
editor in chief of international journal of educational psychology professor tiwari having a very rich research profile here as i am reading continuously but at the same time he is having active involvement in hindi poetry writing so nice to read it sir uh, so tiwari sir i should say that you are an academician a teacher educator with professional excellence and you have a very creative and innovative side of yours also so yes sir i welcome you to share your words of wisdom with all of us we are here to listen to you over to you tiwari sir thank you thank you very much uh, am i audible properly yes sir yes sir you are so thank you dr seema basically uh, we all are teachers and uh, the topic assigned to me is uh, that what kind of reforms uh, there are uh, you can uh, observe in teacher education uh, after this nep 2020 so i think everyone knows that the teacher has three love if you agree there are three love for teacher one love for learning then second love for learners and third the love for bringing the first two love together so basically uh, a teacher uh, should love the process of learning as well as the teacher should love the learners and that is the spirit of teacher education so i think uh, everyone uh, are is very much aware about the kind of reforms that is going in uh, nep 2020 Uh, so i will share some points uh, related to uh, this teacher education reforms so uh, just i'm sharing my screen to you people i hope it is visible to you yes so yes please okay okay so before i start speaking about my uh, topic i just want to know from you all that what is expected from a teacher or what you expect that the position of teacher should be like that because uh, the question arises in uh, mind of everyone that why the teachers are not getting that much of respect and appreciation that is actually required i joined here in uh, nagaland university kohima and i was uh, surprised to observe the kind of respect the people of this community having for the teacher is extraordinary but uh, since i worked in many universities and this is the fifth institute i am working i found that there is a deterioration in the respect of teachers so what position you want to uh, that uh, what the position should teacher have in the society any one of you you can just speak about your uh, views what is uh, what position the teacher should have you can uh, just give it right in the chat box or just message me am i not audible audible sir so i am not finding any response from anyone yeah uh, please reply participants please reply in the chat box humble request to each one of you what is the status of teacher what kind of status of teacher should be there in the society anyone i think it is very easy question see any kind of uh, this in the, uh, presentation or discourse will be only uh, fruitful when you uh, just try to interact with uh, the expert yes a high position with respect and honor very good okay no so so i will just uh, continue with my presentation and uh, as you can see what uh, is expected that teacher must be at the center of fundamental reforms of education system 
I think everyone must be agree with this thing. You can't see when we are talking about the NEP. Is it possible to implement NEP without the active involvement of the teacher? No, it is impossible. So the first most important thing is that the teacher must be at the center of all the educational reforms. So this is to be taken care of. Then the second. this new policy must help this is expectation from the policy that this policy must help to reestablish the teachers at all levels as you mentioned as the most respected and essential member of society because they truly shape our next generation of citizen so this is the expectation from this nep 2020 that it will reestablish the teachers their respect right then this policy must do everything to empower teachers and help them to do their job as effectively as possible so the empowering teacher is very much important uh when you use the term empowering it means you uh, are talking uh, about someone who is ha having a little bit less power when you talk about the women empowerment it means you just uh, assume that women are not so much powerful similarly we are talking about the teacher empowerment it means that there are some uh, views that teacher is not so much empowered so from this nep 2020 we want that teacher must be empowered and the next thing is that this new school policy must recruit best and brightest to enter the teaching profession at all level so this is one of the basic uh, thing that i always keep talking why because people from different uh, field come to the teaching profession only because they are not getting job in some other profession and whenever i start uh, teaching in bed classes i ask the first question to every student that uh, what uh, is the reason for choosing this uh, ba program and you will surprise to know that many of them came to this profession to this program because of other reason they were not willing to become a teacher so that is one of the challenge with this nep 2020 i think everyone must be agree because you all are running ba colleges and definitely there are many students who are very good and they love teaching but there are many who don't want to come to um, to become a teacher so this policy must help recruit very best and brightest to enter the teaching profession at all level so how you can ensure this to ensure livelihood respect dignity and autonomy while also instilling in the system basic methods of quality control and accountability so this is the expectations from this nep 2020 now what nep 2020 says i think everyone is aware about all these things that nep 2020 says that teachers truly shape the future of our children and their own therefore the future of our nation the motivation and the empowerment of teacher is required to ensure the best possible future of our children and nation so you are talking about the future of our nation so you have to think about the future of teachers as well and that's why nepb nep 2020 focuses on this all other policies also uh, have taken account of the importance of teacher but there are some new things and that we will discuss about this for example i'm giving one example i will just repeat this example in my further presentation that according to nep 2020 every teacher and head teacher is expected to participate in at least 50 hours of continuous continuous professional development and that this opportunity will be provided every year for their own professional development driven by their own interest so this is one new thing that you can uh, we can start with that any teacher uh, and or every teacher and every headmaster it, it will be compulsory for every teacher and every headmaster to have at least 50 hours of uh, a training program in service training program it is every year it is mandatory so this is a new thing that you can just observe in nep 2020 
Now, what is the vision of this NEP 2020 in terms of teachers? First of all, continuous professional development is one of the basic thing. So why it is required? Because it will cover the all the latest pedagogy. And you know that in NEP 2020, we are talking about the foundation literacy and numeracy. So this CPD opportunities will in particular systematically cover the latest pedagogies regarding fundamental literacy and numeracy as well as formative and adaptive assessment of learning outcome. See, earlier we were talking about the learning assessment of learning. Now we are talking about the assessment of learning outcome. So learning outcome is very much important. Then competency-based learning and related pedagogies and experiential learning, arts integrated and sports integrated and storytelling based approaches. So there are many new things. I think everyone, uh, I was just listening to the previous uh, discussion. So we, we are talking about the ICT and uh, you know that there is very, very much positive and negative things about the ICT as well. Like you must experience that there was some technical glitch with the, one of the students. So it happens, even it can happen with me as well. But this is a fact that we have to go with this. And it is very important to empower the teacher about the knowledge of all these things. Then, if you want to realize the vision of NEP 2020, you just uh, you should try to understand that uh, many programs are being run by NCRT, Ministry of Education, Department of Educational Literacy, then uh, different uh, other bodies like CBSC, KBS, anymore, and they initiated the NISTA program. I think NISTA program, everyone knows, NISTA training program, and that will be online, and that talks about the different stages of school education. So it is a training program for teachers, it is a training program for a master, it is a training program for other stakeholders, or those who are holding different managerial positions. Now coming to our topic. Uh, I just uh, wanted to uh, you to just understand that these are the, some basic things that uh, are the reforms that uh, we are experiencing in NEP 2020. Uh, first of all, that it talks a lot about CPD as, as we already discussed. So this CPD, continuous professional development, is very much important. Why? Because uh, now in NEP 2020, uh, the focus is on foundation literacy and numeracy. So it is a very uh, important aspect of NEP 2020. So that for that purpose, the teacher must be trained. Then when you are talking about the teacher education, so you have to think about the early grade curriculum because now you know that a new uh, thing, pre-primary education is more focused. We are talking about the early childhood care also. So for that also, the teacher education uh, program can be redesigned to have emphasis on this foundation literacy and uh, numeracy along with the different aspect of early childhood and care. Then, because we know that NEP always talks about the fact that teachers are the core of the learning process. So, the most important part is that they require training in high quality content. This is focused. That the content must be very, very high quality. It is not that a normal kind of teacher training program. So the content of training must be very of high quality as well as about the new pedagogy. And that is to be done by 2030. I think everyone is aware about uh, the new developments in the teacher education programs that the uh, teacher education programs are, it will be difficult for any college that is standalone that uh, to run the teacher education program. So it will move to the multidisciplinary colleges and universities. So this multidisciplinary is one of the important aspects of teacher education program. And that is to be taken care of when you are uh, just mm, in framing or constructing the curriculum of teacher education program. Then, uh, I think everyone is aware about the minimum degree qualification. Now it will be four year. So four year integrated program, grade program is one of the uh, important development. So if anyone can just uh, reflect upon this thing and what that what do you think that making uh, compulsion of the four year uh, teacher training program 
uh, is it good or uh, bad or what you think any one of you you can just message in the chat box anyone who want to respond i think there are many teacher trainees as well who are doing b ed so they can also respond that uh, is it good to have four year teacher training program or not and if yes then why so is it a difficult question or am i not audible audible sir participants kindly respond yeah so this is the fact i understand that every time our teachers have to force the student to respond so this is a very uh, uh, what is required that you should a student should grab the opportunity to interact with any expert so that is a uh, one thing one uh, response i can just get from uh, one student that yes a student will get in depth knowledge and will form a strong base then and that is a uh, response that it will get extra sight of knowledge the basic thing is that the people who are not willing to become a teacher they come to this profession so if you are aware that you have to spend four years definitely you will be uh, sure that i have to go into this profession see teaching is something it requires the teachers of that kind who love the teaching i'm just giving of my example my father wanted to become a doctor but i refused to become a doctor then he just wanted me to become is officer so during the process of preparation of this civil services i started taking coaching to some uh, engineering and medical students for chemistry because i am a professor of chemistry as well so then i realized that it gives me a lot of pleasure see anyone who want to come to this profession must have love to for this teaching profession so for that four year uh, this program is very much required you know that if someone want to become a doctor the person has to qualify neat and go for the medical and for four year training will be there for engineer the same thing so why for not why for not the teaching profession so it is not that if you are failing in other uh, of your uh, professions so you should not come to this profession so that's why this teacher is in a four year integrated course is very much required and it is not that it will be only four years there will be two year and one year programs as well so uh, this is uh, the new thing the reform is there that there will be three types of b ed program one year two year and four year four year for who have done the uh, class 12th and then they can go for the four year who have done a graduation they can go for the two year and those who have done uh, honors of four year uh, graduation then they can go for one year b ed program so uh, this is the uh, three types of b ed program that is it is one of the reforms and uh, uh, if someone has done four year multidisciplinary bachelor degree or uh, who are having a obtained a master degree in any specialty stream they can uh, go for the one year b ed program so there will be three types of b ed program one year two year and four year now uh, one more reform is there that uh, special shorter local uh, teacher education program will also be available at uh, the block level at district level and school complexes so shorter local teacher education program will be there and uh, these courses will be framed to promote local profession knowledge and skills local art music agriculture business sports carpentry and other vocational crafts for example if i am uh, i'm a professor in uh, teacher education in nagaland so what i observe that there is a lot of uh, knowledge indigenous knowledge available here uh, related to the art music agriculture business carpentry and other things also same thing um, is available in uh, madhya pradesh in other uh, parts of the country in other districts of the country there are many tribal belts there are many local uh, uh, goods available local uh, the craft is available so that is to be uh, practiced also and that's why this nep 2020 proposes that there must be 
sort of local education program with a vision to uh, to provide holistic education to the students and that's why the teacher must be aware of that now what are the different agendas of uh, mep 2020 so one uh, thing that is uh, very much uh, delayed see uh, whenever nep uh, any policy comes uh, there is ncf always comes and ncf the national curriculum framework so but we don't have ncf till now there were in government is working and because this nep 2020 uh, we already spent more than one year so we should uh, have uh, this uh, nep ncf and uh, this then again after ncf for other uh, courses there will be a national curriculum framework for teacher education as well so that is that will be called ncft 2021 and that is expected to be formulated uh, by the different uh, with the discussion of different stakeholders state government ministries everyone so uh, ncft 2021 is uh, now it is 2022 but uh, still we are waiting for ncf and ncft 2022 this is one of the agenda and that will focus on the teacher education curricula for vocational education so definitely Uh, those who are you all are running the bgd program the uh, course will be reformed again i think it is reformed in uh, 2014 now again in 2022 it will be changed a lot so all the regulations as well as the program uh, there will be a lot of change one thing uh, that is expected and that is in the, the agenda of the nep 2020 is that uh, teacher will be given more autonomy in choosing the aspects of pedagogy so it is not that of fixed pedagogy for any other uh, any uh, kind of uh, this uh, uh, teaching you have you are free to choose any pedagogy that uh, you find effective for the students uh, to teach and then you can also focus on the socio emotional learning so socio emotional learning is one of the fact because when you talk about the holistic development it is very much important that uh, uh, socio emotional aspect must be practiced by the teachers then uh, the third thing is that uh, teacher will be given the continuous opportunity for self improvement self improvement uh, is very much important that uh, it is not that you have done ba and that is final it is that you have to learn every day i am teaching uh, since 2001 and in every class i learn something new the same thing is with you as well sometimes uh, you have to learn if there is any innovation if there is any new pedagogy if then if there is any advancement in your profession so uh, that uh, you have to think about all these things uh, one day we were discussing about it to a forum and what i found that someone talked about the design thinking that there is a concept of design thinking the teaching as well so then i uh, just get to know, okay there is some new concept of design thinking and then i explored that thing so similarly new things are coming in our profession in the teaching profession in the profession of teacher educators and we have to we should try to uh, learn these new things as well as uh, whatever is happening at uh, international level so it is very very important now uh, what other agendas are there first thing that each as i mentioned i am again repeating this thing and you must remember this thing that this is a one of the important agenda of nep 2020 that each teacher will be expected to participate at least 50 hours of continuous professional development every year so uh, this is one of the thing then uh one is uh, one very much important aspect about the uh, their selection and after their salary uh, and other uh, working conditions i think uh, there is always a gap exists a gap between the government policies and the salary and other uh, other wages to the teacher that actually exists when you work uh, when you talk about the uh, private sector as well sometimes you will find difference from the central city to the state city and then from state city to the private city and the from private city you find the difference from the private colleges as well as private schools and government schools so there is a lot of uh, variation 
so uh, that is uh, one of the agenda is there that one a robust merit based structure of tenure promotion and salary structure will be developed this is one of the agenda of nep 2020 with multiple levels within each teacher stage that in that recognizes the outstanding teacher and so this nep 2020 will honor and recognize the efforts of all educators in making india a vishwa guru so this is a vision of nep 2020 now uh, as i mentioned that nep 2021 is to be drafted so this is one of the thing uh, and the another aspect is that for teacher education this is stand alone for example earlier bed colleges were allowed to run only bed program and uh, but now any college can only run the bed program when it has uh, multiple discipline in its college in, in the in that college and uh, now the things are very very uh, particular i think everyone is aware about the fact that uh, uh, if Uh, NCT is asking to sub for submission of PAR, and uh, if you have not filled the PAR, then they are making the session 2022-23 of any BA and MA as a zero session for those colleges who have not filled the PAR, and it is now uh, after the order of the Supreme Court. So that's why now it is very important to uh, be the to develop the multidisciplinary universities, multidisciplinary colleges. where they can learn uh, the bed will be run in collaboration with the other department like psychology philosophy sociology neuroscience languages art music history literature physical education science mathematics so and that will help in developing the research scenario also that uh, it will carry the cutting edge research in various aspect of education because you know that education itself is a multidisciplinary subject it is not any single discipline you have component from each and every discipline then this bia degree will a range of knowledge content in pedagogy it is not only the pedagogy sometimes when i was teaching in bia program here in kohima uh, we are having only med but earlier i was teaching in bia and i found that students uh, are lacking in content knowledge as well uh, so we assume that uh, they will have the content knowledge but this was the problem and that's why this nep 2020 also focuses that it should uh, also take care of content knowledge in the training program so the curriculum uh, what and what 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 are the changes in uh, the curriculum is expected that it will include the techniques of pedagogy for foundation literacy and numeracy then multi level teaching then evolution learning children with disability and uh, with special uh, reference to the use of educational technology and learner centered and collaborative learning so this these are the things that is to be uh, and one more agenda is there that there will be shorter post bia certificate course certification course that there will be bia and then uh, there can be a post bia certification course so that will be also available for career growth and teachers who wish to move uh, to any specialized area or teaching or leadership or anything so there are some certificate course will be there after doing bia so uh, that will help you to in the professional development and uh, definitely the um, recruitment is one of the aspect of teachers in program and for recruitment in private or government school the teacher must qualify through the teacher education test and uh, definitely demonstration class must be there interview must be there so there should be some good criteria of selection and employment and uh, this uh, tet uh, earlier uh, you know that there is a seated so this eligibility test will now be extended to cover teachers from all the stages foundational stage preparatory stage middle stage and secondary stage now there are four stages 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 and uh, this tet will cover all of them so um, nta is test scores will also uh, be considered for recruitment that nep 2020 promotes the idea of uh, recruiting teacher to a school complex and sharing them across the group of schools so this is a new concept earlier uh, and this is a fact also i think everyone knows that every school may not have all the facilities so the group of schools may uh, work together to utilize the facilities available uh, to each other and in that case the teachers and good teachers can also be used for example if one school is not having a music teacher and another school nearby school is having music teacher 
so the uh, they can collaborate with each other and that uh, kind of school complex is uh, uh, one idea that is fronted in this nap 2020 this nap 2020 also encourages a school complexes to have local eminent persons or expert for example if there is someone who is a master of traditional local art craft vocational craft entrepreneurship agriculture so to meet the need of teacher to teach new and introduce classical language and vocational and skill subject now talking about uh, teaching a uh, career and profession uh, this nap 2020 talks about the creating performance standard for teachers so this is one of the important aspects that it talks about the performance standard for teachers clearly spelling out the role of teacher at different level then by 2022 by this year uh, it uh, just talk about to set a national professional standard for teacher npst so npst will help in just determining the teacher manage, career management the tenure the salary increase promotions and everything so this is one of the aspect it talks about the teacher audit and performance appraisal so this will be there that it is not that you are appointed in a teacher and you will continue without having any of any of the proper performance appraisal then uh, the school teachers must go 50 years of gpd then the school principal also have to go for the continuous professional development then uh, one thing is very important that it talks about the international pedagogical approach so that is one uh, thing that what uh, pedagogical practices are there in india and abroad so that can be learned and uh, teacher empowerment is one of the aspects because teacher uh, want if the teacher is competent the teacher is always seek for freedom and control over the, his or her own, own work so this make will make uh, the field them empowered and motivate to work them harder and enhance their commitment to the learners and uh, recognizing the contribution contribution teacher can make in reforming pedagogy to improve the learning outcome so teacher autonomy is one of the aspect innovative teaching methods then um, when you talk about the enculturation of teacher empowerment so it is that uh, when there will be uh, a school complex so it will reduce the teacher isolation sometimes teacher work in uh, smaller schools and they have a lot of talent so they can share their talent to other schools of a nearby place so this is called schools uh, vidyalaya sankul in hindi and a school complex in english so uh, to help schools and school complexes evolve uh, in this teacher the school management has been directed to ensure adequate and safe infrastructure and sharing of infrastructure sometimes one school may have internet other may not have lab, uh, internet or library so these resources can be shared by the students now uh, uh, i am just want to sum up my uh, discussion and something that is the first thing is that it is very vital teacher education is very vital in creating the pool of school teachers that will save the next generation then teacher preparation is an activity that require multidisciplinary perspective and knowledge formation of the position and values and development of practice under the best mentors and teacher must be grounded in indian values this is one of the important aspect that it has it should has indian values languages known there it this nap 2020 promoting the local language as well ethos and training including the tribal tradition while also being well versed in the latest advances in the education and pedagogy then uh, in order to maintain uniform standard for teacher education the admission to pre service teacher education program shall be through suitable subject and aptitude test as we discussed and national testing agency and other uh, uh, agencies are there to just uh, ensure the cultural diversity of country then faculty pro, uh, profile in the department of teacher education and education will necessarily aim to diverse and but teaching uh, field their research experience must be valued it is not only the teaching there is kind of research must be there then faculty uh, with the training in areas of social science uh, they are may have knowledge of psychology child development linguistic and all these subjects uh, they will be attracted and retained it is opportunity not only the those who have done bear so faculty from other department they will be also be attracted to teachers from department to strengthen the multidisciplinary education and uh, of teachers and provide uh, a rigor in conceptual development so this is all from my side thank you very much and uh, now the house is open for the discussion
yes if anybody is having any question i request uh, they may write in the chat box or they can unmute their mic and directly ask yes any query any question see there are three uh, type of situation one that if you uh, uh, don't listen anything you will not have a question then second stage is that if you uh, understood all the things then you will not have a question uh, you if you uh, don't understand anything even then you will not have any question so the question is only possible when you have gone through all these things as you know that it is already mentioned that no study no confusion more study more confusion so i want if you have any query anything in your mind you can just ask sir i think you uh, were having so many things now i think teachers are reflecting on your work because uh, yes uh, for teachers uh, updation for their professional development so many things as you uh, shared with you with all of us so i think so okay so i think uh, i should propose the formal vote of thanks okay so, thank sir, you sir uh, uh, yes sir as you said yes i agree with you the teacher should be at center of all the reforms in education and as uh, we all know we are continuously talking about the implementation of nep 2020 and yes i again agree the teacher should be empowered with knowledge and skills so continuous professional development is of teachers is urgent need for reforms in education so first of all i am very grateful and thankful to professor gyanayan tiwari sir resource person for the session i am very sure sir that your words of wisdom will surely provide all of us the reflection ability to empower ourselves to be a part of this reform so that we teachers and teacher educators will be able to contribute to nation's growth in a better way thank you very much sir thank you and uh, thank you for calling me uh, i i think that uh, we can just uh, have more collaboration and more uh, such kind of interaction this uh, this is a very good platform i have gone through the browser yes, so i found that uh, you have a very good collaboration as well as you are going to publish the papers also so this is very good thing and uh, keep it up thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much i am very grateful to dr sister tanuja wagmare principal sister teresa's institute of education and to dr father john pj principal the gopal school of social sciences for their motivation and support to conduct such programs for students and teachers i want to thank dr sister sonia kurian vice principal for her guidance and support wholeheartedly i want to show my gratitude to dr sheena thomas hod department of education and dr john lopez organizing secretary of the national webinar I want to thank all the teachers of St Teresa Institute of Education and the Bhopal School of Social Sciences for their inspiration, support and motivation. I want to thank all the participants for their patient hearing and listening. Thank you very much. And now I want to uh, give the mic to Miss Ad uh, Adrija. Uh, 